Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 8 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll take a look at how to import your own loops into Logic's loop library. Back in episode 1, we took a look at the loop browser, and we talked about the difference between audio loops and MIDI loops, and we also said that the advantage of Apple loops uh, is that they conform to the tempo of your project, so there's no extra... Uh, time compression or expansion or flex time needed with them. So this can be really useful if you have a, a sound or a beat or something that you've created that you use all the time and then you want easy access to it. What I'm working with here is a live drum recording that I've rendered down to a stereo audio file. So what I'm going to do is take this, uh, this drum recording and shorten it down to a four bar loop and then add it to the loop library so it can become a searchable Apple loop. So the reason why Apple loops have the ability to stretch and compress to tempo changes is because they're all tagged with tempo information. So it's important to make sure that the tempo of your project matches up with the tempo of your loop. And it's also important to make sure that the intended start point of the loop matches up with the bar line, and also the intended end point of the loop matches up with the bar line, like mine does here. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that my loop sounds okay by testing it with cycle mode. So what I've done is I have selected measures 2 through 5, and I'm going to make sure that the transition from measure 5 back to measure 2 sounds seamless. All right, so that sounds fine. What we're listening for are any pops or clicks or spaces that make the loop from measure five back to measure two uh, sound disjunct in any way. Apple loops have to be trimmed to an exact number of measures, so two measures, four measures, whatever. Um, so you'd think that you'd be able to trim this way by hovering over the lower left or right corner of a region and then clicking and dragging in to trim. However, I found out last week that this actually won't work. If you trim this way and then drag and drop this into the loop browser, it won't let you save it as a loop. And I honestly have no clue why this doesn't work. I'm pretty sure it worked in Logic 9, uh, so it might just be a glitch uh, in this version of Logic 10. And I'm using 10.0.3, so hopefully they fix the glitch later. So what we're going to do first is we are going to set our snap mode to bar mode. And what the snap modes do is they allow you to snap your edits to certain divisions of the grid, in this case, uh, bar lines. The next thing we need to do is choose a tool here called the marquee tool and I know we really haven't gone over all the edit tools yet but we will in the next video alright the tool on the left is your left click tool uh, right now we've got the pointer tool selected and then the tool on the right is your command click tool so you have to hold command while you use it so I've chosen uh, the marquee tool as my command click tool so I have to hold command in order for that tool to, to show up now essentially the marquee tool is a selector tool or a selection tool so it allows you to select a region, click on it to separate it, uh, and you can also hit delete to uh, delete a selection. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag over uh, everything up, up to measure 6 and then just hit delete to get rid of it. Because that's just that last symbol crash that we don't need. So hit delete and that goes away. And then we'll also trim up the first measure here that's basically just silence. And again, I have no clue why you have to do it this way for it to work. You just do. All right, so we're going to take our region here and drag it into the loop browser so it can become a searchable Apple loop. So in order to open up the loop browser, you just click on this icon right here. And another way to pull up the loop browser is to hit O on your keyboard. This will hide and show the, uh, the loop browser. Now, I don't think it's necessary to go over everything in the loop browser again because we talked about it in episode one. And honestly, most of it's self-explanatory. So let's just grab our region here and we'll drag it directly into the loop browser. And you get a little plus sign showing that we're adding it. And then we get this window that says add region to Apple Loops library. All right, at the top you can name your loop. Uh, right now it says laidbackgroove.4. I'm just going to change that to just laidbackgroove. 
And keep in mind that whatever you name your loop will actually be searchable. So I can just search up laid back groove and I'll be able to find this loop again. Now below the name, there's two different types we can choose. If you choose a loop, this makes the region conform to the tempo of the song if you change your tempo. Uh, and this also has to be a whole number of beats or bars. One shot should really only be used if you are dragging in like a sample or a sound effect. Now earlier I said that last week when I tried to use the trim tool rather than the marquee tool, it wouldn't let me save my loop as a loop. Uh, and this is where the, the glitch was happening right here. Um, if I use the trim tool and drag it in, the loop option, uh, you couldn't select it. It was just grayed out. So you're forced to save it as a one shot. However, if you use the marquee tool to trim it, the, you can have an option between one shot and loop. So again, I don't know why it does that. I think it's just a glitch. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to tag our loop with some search parameters. So first you can choose a scale, whether it's major or minor. Uh, in this case, since mine's a, a drum loop, I'm just going to say any. You can choose a genre. Uh, I'm just going to choose rock and blues for this. And was there an any for that? Let me go back there. Genre. Okay, yeah, it was just it was none, but I'll just say rock and blues. And then you can tag your loop with some instrument descriptors. So I'm going to say all drums. I'm going to say beats since it's a whole drum kit. And on the right here, you can add some search parameters that correspond to the buttons in the loop browser. So I'm going to say acoustic, clean, uh, we'll say dry, uh, grooving since it's a drum, uh, drum beat, and then I'll say relaxed since I called it laid back groove. And after you choose those, you just hit create on the bottom and it indexes your loop into the loop library. Wow, that's really taking a while to process. Um, I, I doubt yours will take this long to process the loop. I think the issue is um, is my screen capture software is clashing uh, with logic right now. It seems like whenever I have screen capture open and I open up the loop browser, I get a bunch of lag and it's even crashed a couple times. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's even crashed a couple times on me, but there we go. So now it's indexed the loop into the loop library and I should be able to now just go search for the loop. So I don't even need this uh, original anymore. I can just delete it and we'll go into our loop library and just search up laid back groove. And there it is. And so it shows the loop that we added, shows the name, shows that it's an audio loop because of the blue icon. And it shows that it's 16 beats long. So basically four measures long. And it also has a tempo of 100 BPM. So let's just drag this out into our range area. And it'll ask you, do you want to import the tempo? Sure, not that it really matters. And I'm going to close up my loop library. And just like in episode one, we can hover over the upper right corner of the loop to loop it. So there we go. And let's just uh, hit play and see how this turned out. Alright, it sounds like it turned out just fine, and in the next episode we'll be taking a look at the edit tools in Logic, and actually for the next uh, two or three videos, we'll just be talking about audio editing. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.